Hey everybody and welcome back to my channel. So today I wanted to talk to you about dim bulb current limiters. In case you don't know what a dim bulb current limiter is, it's a device that allows you to limit the amount of current into an electrical or electronic device that you're working on. In its most basic form, this would be a dim bulb current limiter. The power from the, your outlet will go through a light socket and then through to the device you're working on. You can see that the power is not on on this. Maybe if I shade it. And if I turn it on, the power comes on. In this case, the light bulb didn't light because this does not require enough power and does not have an electronic short in it to draw enough power to light the light bulb. If I short these two wires together and turn it on, this would act as if a short in whatever device you're working on, it would light it full blown, like a short. YouTube has been recommending all these videos to me about dim bulb current limiters, so I decided to make my own. This is my dim bulb current limiter. It has a couple special features. It has a fuse on the inlet. I think it's five amp right now, which would be about 600 watt limit. It has the ability to do six different current limits, 40, 60, and 100 watt. 140, 160, and all three of them would be 200 watts. The power can either go through the, the current limiting of the bulbs, or you can select full power and then switch it back to dim or current limited power. The thing that, that's a little unique about this one, I've seen a lot of others where they just have a household switch that switches full power through, is every time you turn this one off or off, it will switch back to current limited power. I'll show you what I mean. So if we turn it on, it's in limit mode. If I hit full power and either turn it off or unplug it and then turn it back on, it's in limited power. The banana jacks are very useful for testing circuits that aren't, or devices without a plug, like this power supply. If we switch on the 40 watt, oops, I had the 100 on. If we switch on the 40 watt, you can see it's 40 watts, 60 watts, or now 200 watts, or any combination therein. If I switch it back to 40 watt and hook this to this power supply, you can see that the power supply comes on. I can hit full and basically it's uh, eliminated the current limiting capabilities of this and providing full power to it. Switch it back to limit power. Where this becomes very useful I was working on this ballast, this electronic ballast, and trying to figure out what was wrong with it because it wouldn't start the, the fluorescent bulb. So <clears throat> when I hooked power to it, as you can see, it started for a second and then the bulb went full bright. I thought there was a problem with the ballast, but it wasn't the ballast. I kept looking through, looking to, for different components that were bad, I finally came to the conclusion that it wasn't the ballast that was bad, it was that I was not providing enough startup current for it to actually start and, and latch on. And as you can see, it, it didn't start in 60 watt either. But when you use 100 watt, that's enough to get it started and stay on. And as you can see, there's a little bit of current still going through the 100 watt bulb. Not as much as would be going through a 40, but the 40 doesn't have the current to get it started. I can switch it to full power mode. It goes a little brighter because now it has all the power going to it and this bulb isn't in use anymore. And it wouldn't matter if I switched on the 40 or not now. I can switch it back to dim and now 
it'll go back to being the, the 40 watt dim bulb or current limit. So other things that make this a, a good option for you to have to work on components are that if you're working inside a component and you accidentally touch the live in, instead of having whatever your breaker for your house is current coming to you, you are limited to the amount of wattage that you are passing through the current limiter. So normal use would be in the dim or current limit mode and you would usually start with a 40 watt limit. That limits you to about, in the United States, about a third of an amp. So although it can still sting, it definitely won't sting as bad as, you know, a full 20 amps will. To make this, I designed and printed this 3D base, or sorry, three bulb base, based on these sockets from Amazon. I could take out the brass parts from here and put them in. These 3D designed parts will be, this uh, print will be available, link will be in the description. It uses this double pull, double throw relay. And this is the schematic. So if you have any questions or comments, please leave them in the comments below. If you want to see other videos like this, please like and subscribe. Like, spoiler, we're working on a key code a battery operated Arduino powered keypad uh, gate opener. But anyways, like and subscribe. Thanks for stopping by.